episode 193 of the White Cat Outdoors podcast, bringing you to the table while we talk about the outdoors. This week, in honor of Labor Day weekend, this is when this will be launching, hopefully you're listening, um, we're going to just talk about a little bit of all of the things we've done throughout the year to improve our property and get ready for season. Um, there's a ton of work that goes into a 100-acre piece um, to keep it growing and increase the quality of deer on your property. So we kind of just hit on a few things like that, uh, what we've learned throughout the property. And we're actually, first time we've had a mid-episode guest uh, appearance um, from our good buddy Austin Enterline. So he joins us on to uh, finish out the episode. But we hope you guys enjoy this episode. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. You've all earned it. Uh, why don't we just quit rambling and get tuned into this week's episode? I pull up my bow and then I look dead at his antlers. I got out of the truck and when I slammed the door, I heard gobbles all around me. Alaska. Moose, spot and sock. That is the bucket list. I agree. Tom, you said you were running this one. Well, I still thought yeah. you would bring us in. Oh, well, I've been out for so long, I just don't know what I'm doing I hope anymore. you have a good excuse. Uh, my house was full of bees. I had a big bee's nest living under the floor, and uh, the place that I rent, the back door, is uh, it lets a lot of water in when it rains. So the floor is very rotted, and... So the bees like came, they got under the siding and then they're like, oh, all this is rotted. We can just keep going. And then they got under the floor and then up into the house. And it's just been a real nightmare at my house the last week. So I'm sure you got it all squared away, though. I've been trying, but uh, it seems like the more bees I kill, the more bees show up. So where does this fall with your landlord? Like to me, it sounds like a landlord problem more than a tenant problem. Yeah, it's one of them things. He just says, well, you deal with it and let me know what it costs. Yeah, he said, if I have to buy anything for it, then he'll pay for it, which is nice. Yeah, I mean, I guess you know your tenant or your landlord on a more personal level than just being your landlord. Yeah. So it's cool that you can just kind of work out that agreement. Maybe save your money on the rent or something if you do all the labor. Yeah. So we'll... We'll see like, if yeah, we can it get turns that out I had to totally just build a new A-frame. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you're going to need to give me $100,000 right now. I don't think he's going to go for that. Probably not. You can Probably try. Not. Anyway. Anyway, so as <laughs> Nick said that... I didn't I was, say anything. Oh. I said it. Oh, as Frank said, I was going to kind of be running this show tonight. And we figured by the time you guys are listening to this, It'll be probably Sunday morning, 5 o'clock. It'll be Labor y'all. Day. I know. Well, Nick said he's been releasing on Mondays lately because it's better for viewership. Yeah. For Listenership. some reason, so I don't know why, but like a couple days I was late on releasing, and it seems like more people see it when it gets released on Monday because – They're at work. It, and yeah, they're at work, and it lights up their phone. Sunday at 5 a.m., most people aren't – awake so they see it and be like yeah i'm busy you know doing whatever so i'll I'll listen to that later and they forget about it Mm -hmm. but when the notification hits on monday when they're already at work they're like oh sweet oh my goodness do we have a look at this this is a special guest little visitor jumping in what let me just fire you up over here austin austin it's good to see you what's going on Make sure you get in on nice and close on that mic are we live right now oh you're live we're We're way in we're rolling yeah you have to watch your mouth you can't Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. How so, you guys doing? Good. good. 
Glad to have you in the studio, Austin. You guys Austin. just wrapping up right now? No, we're no, just getting started. Oh, boy. Okay. We're just kicking it off, dude. <clears throat> You're just in time. Yeah, so. we haven't even got to the meat and potatoes of the show yet. I don't think Tom's even told us what we're talking about tonight yet. Yeah. We don't even know what the meat and potatoes are. Wow. Could yeah, be tofu. I did bring some bear fat, too. So. Oh, oh. No, you did not. I didn't even know if that stuff existed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's here. So, anyways, meat and potatoes. By the time you guys are listening to this, it's going to be Labor Day. So... I, I hope you have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. And we kind of just wanted to quickly go over all of the work that we've done up at our headquarters property this summer. And you Are know, we going to get into the why, too? No, yeah, and the why, and the why how it is turned for out. Deer. Mm. Big bucks. That's why we do it. We do it again and again. Yeah. And because, really, Labor Day kind of marks when we kind of put a halt on the work and stay out of the woods and kind of let the deer have a month off of no intrusion. I was going to say, Labor Day is like exactly one month from start of season. Yeah, so all of our, our labor getting ready for deer season is done, leaving the woods alone, let the deer get back on their natural routine, and uh, then come October we go on and Give smoke. them hell. Yeah. Well, not Austin because he's an Ohio guy. but uh, Might even be doing the 16th hunt. It's what? in two weeks. Where is that? In Ohio? Kentucky? Uh, Pittsburgh. No. Oh, you're going oh. down there. I was thinking about it. Well, the guys from work were talking about it, so might even be doing that. There's is it a buck? Y- yeah, what does that entail? I don't even I think know what you're dogs, talking isn't about. It? I think it's buck. I, I have to double check. They were just talking about it, so. Mm. There's, is it just, there's like an open from then until yeah. season? Yeah. It just opens early. And it, what, yeah, two weeks early. I don't, is that 2F or 4F? Or there's what? still a bunch of doe tags left, too, so. I don't know. I know that like up in New York, uh, where our buddy Keith hunts, he, they have like an early rifle doe season before archery. Really? Yeah. Dude, if you could shoot bucks, like you could. When does that start? You have, like it's a September chance? September sixteenth. Of... Yeah, it's two that, weeks uh, before. Pr- uh, so there's probably no velvet, but it's a good chance you're going to get it. I got a bu- partially velvet in that end of October. <laughs> you're dumb. But that would be sweet to shoot a velvet buck. That's, yeah, that's a little late for velvet, but still, there's a chance. I don't know if it chance. is doe or not, so just doe or I'd have to double check before I sound like an idiot. So, <laughs> well, You do anyway, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, babe. Oh, thanks. So, Tom, what, what have you done? So, what, what kind of labor have you put in? <laughs> so we always try and start the year out in the summer we kind of wait until you know turkey season wraps up and then we start prepping for deer season and we typically the first thing we get into the ground is corn and soybeans and it, it's really been not so much hit or miss with the corn and beans it's more like miss and miss it's all miss <laughs> we did have good corn last year i don't know why but i guess the birds didn't wreak havoc on it But this year, we got everything in the ground, late May, early June, coming up beautiful. And then you go up two weeks later, and the crows and blackbirds have picked every corn stalk, and the woodchucks and deer and rabbits have eaten the soybeans to the ground. Mm -hmm. So I tell you what, the best corn that we grew it's all Austin was Austin accidentally planting no, corn it was 100% oh, all that was intentional I oh. actually asked Tom I'm like hey can I put a couple of rows down the middle here And yeah that's the only corn that came in well <laughs> so I think and this is just my theory so oh boy planting the corn in the soybeans and I, I see a lot of like whitetail farmers do this um, plant and, corn with the beans yeah and Austin was actually explaining it too the nutrients that the corn takes out of the ground, the soybean puts back into the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think your corn, it's most crucial like the first two weeks after it sprouts. Mm-hmm. It's real small and the birds can pick it. But if you plant soybeans first or with the corn, the soybeans come up first and kind of hide Shield that it. corn until it's tall enough to where the birds can't pick it out. And Austin planted four rows of corn in the beans, and all four rows came up perfect. Mm-hmm. So, so maybe that's something we explore next year, or, or we just say fuck it and give up on it completely. Tom said he wants no, to give it I'm another year it a shot because we have 
visual confirmation that yeah, it works. That it works. So we're gonna give it a try. See how it goes. And if this doesn't work, then then I'm done. Tom, we've said that for like four years. Yeah, now. but then like, I keep, this is the last time. And then we're like, you know what? We'll then we find another piece of information. Yeah. You know, when me and Nick first started doing food plots, they didn't come out like they do now. Mm-hmm. It, it's a learning curve. Yeah. And we've been doing corn and beans for what? This was year four. three? <clears throat> no, this was year three. Three for corn, four for beans. Yeah. So it probably took us, what, four years to figure out food plots? So year number five, here yeah. we come. Well, yeah. So I think this is this is uh, this coming year is our year. Nick, what are you doing? I'm trying to be discreet about showing you the difference in height with the microphone because you don't like me doing it on live. <laughs> wow, you're but really killing it with the discreet. <laughs> I've been right here. You, you're up here. Oh, Sorry, man. I'm not five foot eight. Yeah, just kind of hunch over and talk like yeah. this. It's perfect. Yeah. It so sounds a shorter chair. It's not good for the for posture. Taller it table. sounds so much better. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so I think next year might actually be our last attempt if it doesn't work. But I got high hopes because the way Austin has it going, that corn is looking good. That Austin guy, he knows what he's doing sometimes. Well, that's just what from what I learned. My dad That's and, an Ohio trick? No, my dad does it, and it turns out pretty good every year. But, yeah, yeah it keeps your soil about... The happy medium, so you don't have to put an extra fertilizer in next year, and hmm. works out pretty good. Good deal. Do so, does your dad use any fertilizer? Yeah, yeah. He does a soil sample in the beginning of the year, and so we even did that this year. Yeah, everything came up. It it was was just, yeah, it wasn't a soil issue that we had. It was it was a, a nature issue. Yeah, like birds and what have you. So, tell me this: Are you planning on doing both fields, corn and beans? Oh yeah. So we'll have twice the beans, twice the corn. Mm. Going to be in rolling theory. in it. How well do the beans come up? When Just probably mm. even a little bit better than most of the fields I've seen. But, I mean, it, I don't know how or why it works so well, but, I mean, it's proven from us that mm -hmm. it does pretty well. So Interesting. Well, I'm not going to hold you to the it. one last try because I've been hearing that story for a while. Yeah. I got a good feeling. We'll be trying it for the next 10 years. Tell you what, once we get it figured out, though, we're going to know everything not to do. Yeah. So, anyway, that was the first thing we did. And <laughs> as you could tell, it didn't really work out. Uh, we ended up mowing it and spraying it. and That was actually the second thing. What, what was, was the, the first? first? Trees. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. Started out with some trees. Um, we did, I don't know. I think it was just a small batch this year. It was like 500 total. It Which was like, sounds like a lot, but saplings plant easy. So that's yeah. I mean, that's a weekend. You're easy. Done. Yeah, we did 300 oak and chestnut and then 200 pines, I believe. Something along those lines. Don't quote me on that. And it's kind of tough to tell because you plant them um, early spring when the field is low. And yeah. you put them in the ground and now all the weeds are tall so they're taller than the trees mm -hmm. but some of the trees that we planted three years ago have really taken off yeah mm -hmm. some of them are eight foot tall yeah, yeah. really and some low. of those white pines that we planted that were you know just a couple inches they're three four feet tall now yeah so the fruits of our labor are starting to pay off i think in another 10 15 years all those trees that we planted in the field, it's going to make great bedding and food all in one because there's going to be mm -hmm. plenty of oak trees, plenty of pine trees, and there's still going to be enough sunlight for the goldenrods to come through. So it's mm -hmm. just going to be a thick, nasty mess of Yeah, I hope my, perfection. I guess, end goal with it is to attract deer to stay longer. Oh, yeah. Because, um, like, it seems like the rut gets nuts in there. Like, for, like, a week, two-week period, Frank and I saw tons of different shooter bucks. But then it, it it's getting better, um, but it always seems to taper off the later we get into the season. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I st I did get a buck in December. I think was it December or November? December. I think it was. I don't remember. Either way, late, late November. It, I think it was. No, it was, yeah, November it was, it was definitely November. It was the opening day of gun in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so it was a week into the season for them. But uh, yeah, we don't typically see a ton of bucks the later we go, but it's getting better. And I think having all the trees and stuff in the woods, 
I mean, in the fields, eventually it'll get it really thick and mm -hmm. hopefully hold deer longer. And the selective cut logging that we did a few years ago, all the undergrowth, it didn't really take off until this year. Yeah, and it's and looking, oh, you walk through, like down the logging road and look up on that hillside. Oh, my God. There's, I've got two spots on that hillside I plan on throwing a mobile setup. Yeah, good at. luck yeah. with that. I'll be there. Browse for days. Frank, if it's not five yards, you can't even shoot. So. Oh, my God. Listen to him. I'll shoot a deer at 100 yards this year. Just I just watched a video of a guy shoot a mule deer at 98 straight on with a bow. I did see that. That's a poke. Yeah. There was a lot of people telling him it was unethical, and I can't I'm, say I totally disagree. I'm thinking I'm one but, of the people. Yeah, I mean, a straight on shot, and I mean, he right into the pump station. But That's crazy. Velvet muley, beautiful buck. <sighs> Don't even get me started. But like you, you so the video you couldn't see his vitals, and then the arrow he comes arced the, it into it, the vitals. Yeah, the, like you can see its head, and then you the arrow comes up, disappears behind a bush, and then just sprayed blood. And I'm like, oh my god. That's crazy. Yeah. Neat. But yeah, so after we get the... <laughs> Back on topic. <laughs> after we get the corn and the beans in the ground, uh, usually wait till late July, early August to do our other food plots, which consist of clover, chicory, turnips, radishes, oats. Rutabaga. Yeah. If it's in the mix. <laughs> I don't think it is. Some of it, you'd be surprised. But what we started doing a couple years ago is every food plot that we start, we start out as a radish and turnip food plot, mm. and we underseed it with clover. So the first year it comes up, it beautiful turnips, and then the and following radishes. year it's just clover that mm -hmm. you just have to mow. And then every few years you kind of just rotate. So we always have turnips on the property, but they're could be in different spots year to year. Mm -hmm. They always seem like the turnips and radishes always seem to be the hottest spots early season. Mm -hmm. um, but you wherever, can't just keep planting turnips year yeah, after year. Yeah, you got to rotate it. Yeah. And doing it every couple of years, you leave all that dead, those dead roots in there, and it really helps the clover come up the following year. Then you leave that alone for a couple of years. Just and let it, the clover do its thing. It's a good tree stand snack too. Yeah, it is. I love I love eating turnips. Yeah, big time. So it's, a, it's like an apple, spicy, chalky apple. I don't know why. No, just, not chalky. I mean, they're a little chalky. No. Like if you compare You're it to an apple, the wrong ones. Why would you compare it to an apple, Nick? Because that's it's how I nothing like an apple. I kind of mm. eat it like an apple. Same shape, same size. No, they're nothing like an apple. It's not like I'm comparing apples to oranges. Yeah, you're comparing apples to radishes and turnips, and that's ridiculous. Mm. Well, I'm still going to eat them. Oh, I'm going to eat them too. Even though the food plot bag does say not for human consumption. Well, they're wrong. But either way, we got those in the ground, and all the food plots are coming in good. Clover looks good. Chicory, all, the, all it looks good. Mm -hmm. And usually about that same time, uh, we get into doing our tree stand checking. And me and Nick, if you listen last week, kind of, I'm not going to go into great detail because last week we really hammered this home. Um, but it's just a good time of the year, a month out from the, or a couple months out from the season. Get all your trees pruned, give the deer enough time to get used to the shooting lanes that you cut in because mm -hmm. they definitely notice branches and saplings that get cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. um, where are we at? I going to say there? I don't know. Couldn't have been that important. It no. sounds like it's not important. No, at it was all. Um, probably something stupid. Nick's oh no, good it, no, that. this was actually good. Um, I don't. <laughs> I don't think if we touched on it last week or not, but especially like the checking stands and everything. If you have somebody new hunting your property, that's like the perfect time to give them a tour of the property and help them learn where stand locations are at. Because mm -hmm. um, I know, like Austin, last year it was your first year at our property. You came around when we did all of our stands. It kind of gives you an opportunity to see where tree stands are at. Yeah, you can in be the like, daylight. That's yeah, a lot of times people than, walk like, looking in. looking on Onyx or something, like mm -hmm. see it in person. But yeah. yeah, or if like you're just describing to somebody, yeah, you just walk down this way, and the first time they're going into a stand, it's pitch black yeah. on the first day. They're going to have a hard time finding it, even if it's in an easy spot to get to. 
Yeah, and we're some of ours are in easy spots, but like Austin's stand that he picked, there's not really much of a trail leading to it. Mm-hmm. So you kind of just have to know where it's at. Yeah. If you ask Austin, it's 30 yards off the hidden food plot. <laughs> yeah, Austin doesn't know shit. <laughs> oh, man. Everyone seems to find it when they're dragging a deer through, so. <laughs> <laughs> I still kind of wish I would have just not said a word to you guys and just drug it in front of your cell cam. That would have been funny. I would have loved that. I, was I would like, have hung that picture on my wall somewhere. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to do it again. I'm surprised Austin didn't just take that stand down, so I'm done. Yeah, that tree's I'm gone. With it. He cut, cut the whole the tree, tree down. <laughs> He didn't just take the stand. He cut the tree down. Yeah. So, so what other kind of labor have you done, Tom, getting ready for the season? Um, I uh, pretty much wraps That's it up. Pretty much yeah. it for now. I mean, we're putting the bar in next weekend. Yeah, I want to save that. I was gonna. Yeah, well, I didn't I'm realize Austin was gonna, coming tonight, but yeah, um, yeah we'll next deal with week. It next week. Next week, we're making some pretty serious upgrades um, to the headquarters. Um, I got a little special treat I'll tell you guys about after this because it's could get wild. Um, Putting in a stripper pole. No, oh, baby. That was not, that was not <laughs> no. on the docket. Um, now we just got to find some Amish strippers and we're good to go. I think that's a, we're 193 episodes in. I think that's the first time strippers have been brought up on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And they were Amish to boot. Yeah, Amish strippers. Tell me another podcast that you heard that <laughs> talk about. <laughs> um, I guess on that note, I think we're going to go shoot our bows, which everybody else should be doing too. Everybody better be doing it because we're only a month away. Yeah. So you guys all know what to do. Get outside.